Hi, my name is Amanda Hemmingson. I'm an editor contractor at Army University Press. I've worked there for three years, and before that I taught composition and worked at the Writing Center at the University of Kansas. Um, so I have extensive experience across a, a wide variety of looking at um, writing. Uh, and so today I'm going to talk with you about writing for publication. Um, and I just want to begin by saying that everything that I'm introducing to you are skills that take more than just a presentation to master. So this is just an, introdu an introduction, something to orient towards as you build your skills in writing and writing for publication. Okay, so with introductions and conclusions, um, I think it's important to recognize that not only does your introduction need a logical hook, it needs an emotional hook, and it needs a hook of credibility as well. Uh, you know, human, human beings don't orient towards just logic, and even though we're taught that in school, you actually need to think about the emotions, attitudes, beliefs, biases of your audience, um, so that way it can show up in your introduction and make it more compelling. And then along with that, you need to you need to have you need to establish your credibility. Um, so that comes for some people with their research, with their degrees, um, and if you don't have that, then that means you need to establish context. So how you set up your knowledgeability about um, your your topic in the introduction um, establishes your credibility. Okay, so your thesis statement is your. It, you know, it's the linchpin of your article. Publishing houses, when they're reading a research piece, this is the first thing that they're going to look for, and this is the thing that they're going to orient to throughout your entire paper. Um, so your, your thesis statement needs to be incredibly polished. Um, and I recommend having a working thesis as you're writing and then going back in and revising it and polishing it up at the end. You know, so if uh, one of the last things that you should do with your paper is make sure your thesis is, is as specific, precise, and compelling as you can possibly make it. Um, so I have a suggestion, which is to give, if you're, if you're working on your paper, um, you could just, you know, at a casual lunch conversation, just throw your thesis sentence out there and see how people respond to it. You actually, if people are willing to engage genuinely, you can get a lot of feedback and insight into your project just from doing this, not even having them read your full paper. Uh, and then the other suggestion, a lot of times people end up having more compelling thesis statements in their conclusion or last couple paragraphs. Um, so if, you, if you're the type who writes a full draft out, check your, less, your last couple paragraphs and see if there's one in there that you can bring to the top. Um, even though this is about introductions and conclusions, it's still important to, to connect to the, the evidence and reasoning because they all interlace and, and weave in together. Um, so in in the first half of your paper, if you introduce a concept or idea, you need to make sure that it's fully woven in. Um, there's a tendency these days to kind of load as many concepts as you can into a paper, um, and that doesn't actually make you look smart. It's actually more efficient to just have a few and really refine and make them meaningful. Um, so any concept that you introduce um, that someone else has researched or described, you need to make sure is fully integrated into your paper. Um, a lot of times what I see is that um, they haven't fully mastered the concept, and so they're explaining it to kind of begin to master it themselves, um, but they haven't mastered it. Um, and so within each paragraph, you need to make sure the reasoning and analysis supports the topic sentence. That's just an easy, efficient way to check how your, your paragraphs are working. Um, and then another thing that you need to consider, is there an aspect or focus that hasn't been um, talked about. So we get a lot of like, there needs to be a whole of government approach to da 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 da, um, but people don't actually go in and research about the other departments. They just, you know, they really know the Army, so they talk about the Army a lot and then just mention another department. So if you're going to mention something, you need to make sure it's integrated. And I think that, that kind of sums up the rest of the questions on this. Okay, so conclusions. Um, your, your conclusion in military writing needs to be practical. Um, practical, practical, practical. You, you're, you're wanting to show some sort of application. And your application doesn't have to solve all the problems, right? Like you're not going to fix the army in your, pair, in your paper, so don't even try. <laughs> you, know, you know, maybe you just need to be informing people. Um, maybe you just need to be posing a question. Maybe you just need to be reframing the problem. Um, maybe. Uh, maybe you just need to be um, creating a new definition. Um, so your conclusion, your so what, your point, doesn't have to solve the world, and it's going to be more effective if you narrow it down. And if you narrow it down to individuals. 
right? Like it's it's more effective to think of this as influence than, than changing, right? Like you're just trying to gradually influence people to change how they think about your topic. Okay, so I wanted to give you guys um, a writing exercise to use. Um, so you can use this either on your own or with a partner in some way, shape or form to kind of go in and hone your paper. Um, so, you know, if you if you write down you, you can have you can have someone else answer this about your paper or you can write it yourself and check it against your paper. So if you gave your paper to someone and said, okay, what do you see as my intended effect? And they're not seeing, you know, if they're describing something that's different than what you intended, then you have some work to do. Um, and asking what kind of conclusion is most useful, that is probably something you need to do in the, the earlier drafting stages, um, right? Because you want to write your way towards your so what and your bigger picture. Um, and then something else that you could talk about with a, with anyone really, like what what's the roadblock? What's the block? Um, just articulating it out loud actually really helps. Um, and if you find someone who knows something about writing, helps even more. Um, and then the other one, which I mentioned before, is just to give someone your thesis and see what happens. Just have a genuine conversation around that. It can actually spark a lot of insight. Okay, and then some other suggestions I have for refining your paper, um, reverse outline. Um, so if you go and create like a, a little, on each paragraph, like this is what this paragraph is doing and you go through and just have those kind of phrases or sentences describing what the paragraph does, um, that can be really useful for helping you reorganize or decide if you're kind of going off on a side trail or what have you. Um, and this is something that takes practice to use, but once you, once you can use it, it's very effective. Uh, another way to kind of break apart your paper to bring in more creativity and critical thinking um, is to draw a map between your thesis and subclaims, right? So if you just have a blank piece of paper or a whiteboard and draw a map, that can also be really helpful. Um, I'm a huge advocate of returning to free writing. Um, you know, in any shape or form, free writing helps clear your mind and get you back on a, a, a good track with your thinking. Um, and then I think these questions are very important to ask of a paper. <laughs> People don't like to delete their work. You need to be willing to delete your work. You need to be willing to delete whole paragraphs or sections. It's just part of writing. Especially your introductions and conclusions, because those are the ones that really sell people. Um, and with that, you know, checking your intro and conclusion to make sure it's well situated in some larger conversation. Um, making sure that all the background information is in the paper. Um, you can do kind of a ranking of the different kinds of evidence that you have in there. What's the strongest, what's the weakest? Maybe you can delete the weakest and find something else to add or expand on the strongest. Uh, and then another one, right, if you're, if you're not super into revising, um, it takes a lot of work to learn how to do that, but if you just start with your topic sentences and rewrite those to be more refined, clear, with strong verbs, um, that's a good place to start.